Today, we're gonna to be working on a massive sheath for this dagger. I've got the dagger all masked off so we don't scratch it, so let's jump right into the video and get started on the sheath. First thing we need to do is make a pattern of the blade and uh, start cutting leather. I'm gonna use a file folder for the pattern that we're gonna make. So on a sheath like this, I like to come in and measure wherever the outline of the blade was and add approximately a half inch on each side. And that'll be for our welt later on down the road. Now we'll go ahead and cut out the pattern that we've got made here. Here's our basic pattern for the dagger. So we need to cut out a front and a back. Uh, we need to go ahead and cut out the welt. And then once we get that stuff going on, we might figure out what kind of, uh, I wanna do like some kind of exotic skin, probably on the throat and tip area. So after we get all of our basic leather pieces cut out, we'll figure out what we'll do with that. And we'll probably end up drawing on the pattern and then cutting the pattern out to make a throat and tip piece for the exotic overlays that are gonna go on the throat and tip area of the sheath. I stared at leather for a few minutes, like 10, and I think I have a game plan for the direction I wanna go with the sheath. Got some rough marks cut out, uh, rough marks marked out on the leather. I'm going to cut it across this line and then I'm gonna fine tune the uh, marks with my pattern and go ahead and get the front and back of the sheath cut out. And then I'll have an extra little strip here for the welt going around the, uh, the edge of the blade. making a pattern for the throat area of the sheath. So I'm planning on covering most of the sheath with this really, really pretty shark skin. A piece of leather on the throat area will be, have a pretty cut out and it'll go around the, uh, around the edge of the leather and, and go to the inside so that the end of the sheath will have nice smooth leather on it. I'm gonna use some of this really nice thin black leather for that. Now that I have my pattern made for the throat area of the decorative leather piece, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. I'm using, like I said, I'm using this really gorgeous, gorgeous veg tan pre-dyed leather of the cow variety, bovine leather. Time to cut out this really nice shark skin next. This is gonna cover the majority of the sheath. Next thing I'm gonna do is contact cement these shark skin sections onto the two halves of the, uh, the thicker stuff I got going on here. Contact cement for the win. Uh, it's super thin now, so I thinned it down to make it go a little further and really thin. You really can't make it go further because when it's thinner you still, you have to use more of it. Contact cement is applied. It's time to put these pieces together and then uh, lightly hammer all over them to really make the contact cement contact itself. I put my leather on here where I want it to end, trace the line around here. That way I'll know where I can 
put the contact cement right up to the line. I also tapered this piece of leather down so there'd be a nice smooth transition under there instead of a weird hard transition. So now we're ready to get the contact cement on these pieces and start start sticking them together. And this is going to be real tricky here because I need to I need to pull on it really really hard and and form it around the end of this because I want it to go around the end and uh, be contact cemented on the inside too. Next thing we got to do here is I'm going to wet this area of the throat piece of black leather that gets bent over. So I'm going to wet it so I can bend it over and hopefully match this radius better. I want to do it that way just to make the end of the leather look nicer, bend it around. I'm not sure it'll work because this leather is a little thick, but I'm going to try it. And if it doesn't work, I can just cut it off flush and then, and then uh, finish the leather out with some edge finishing, my little stag burnishing tool that I use. So yeah, I gotta do that to both of these pieces. Skiving time. I love skiving leather. Someday I'll get a big leather skive or a splitter. I don't know if it's called a skive then or, or if it's called a splitter that I'm thinking of. But anyway, this little handheld skive is really, really fun. As long as the blade's sharp. If the blade's not sharp, it's miserable. What I want to do now is thin, taper this leather down because I don't want this abrupt, this really abrupt seam in here. So I'm going to taper it a little bit. So I want the, I want the dagger to go in real nice and smooth. Got nice smooth leather on the inside. So just want to taper that transition a little bit. Doing a little test on this scrap piece of leather to see what I want to do on the surface of this leather because it's going to get some tooling or something. So I'm going to try a little test area out with a kind of a quilted pattern that I was wanting to try. Or I've done it before. But I was thinking about doing it on this one. I haven't done it in a long time. I think I got a pattern figured out. Um, what I'm going to do is mark out a grid and then take, uh, take just kind of an angled punch that smooths stuff out and make, make the, the line where the grid is marked out kind of stand up and, and recess the leather around it. And then probably put a little round thing, whatever it is, at the corner, at each corner of the grid, and then maybe do some kind of little flower in the middle, not sure about that yet. I just checked the dagger fits in there really well uh, with the, the curve we got going on here, so I think that's going to be good, the radius on the top of the sheath. Something that I forgot that I need to do, need to stitch along this part right here to make sure that stays down forever. I don't need to stitch across here at all because the welt is going to go on here and that'll get stitched so this this will never peel off or come up, come off or anything so I don't need to worry about that. Yeah, I need to run a little stitch across there and there and then start marking out my lines where the main stitching is going to go and start marking out the grid for this because I'm going to do this tooling pattern thing on the areas right here and here so I can start doing all that stuff and then we'll get the welt going on inside of here. Yes. Okay, I've had a serious case of deja vu. I feel like I've been here before. Okay, with one eye closed, you really can't tell depth of where the thread is. There we go. I'm using some super heavy duty uh, thread. I don't know what it's made of, but it's waxed. I think it's some kind of nylon. I'm not sure though. It only comes, it comes in five, like there's five little strands that make up the, the uh, thread. It's way too thick, especially for this delicate stitching. This, I'm doing the stitching right here where the, the holes are really close together and I want extra delicate thread for that. So I normally split the string apart. I split it into a three strand piece because like I said, it's five strands total. 
So I split it into a three strand section that I do my main stitching with, and I do any little light stitching with either one or two strands. I'm gonna do two strands on this. It's time to make like Lilo and stitch. <laughs> uh, anything to keep myself amused. I want to smooth out this rough leather a little bit, so I'm using a little bit of this, uh, whatever this is, I'm not going to try to say it. I'm just rubbing it in there just to lay some of the fibers down. I'll probably end up using this on the edge of the sheet too. Man, this stuff works a lot better when it hasn't been frozen like 15 times. <laughs> like the other stuff I had was. Make it nice and smooth and creamy. Next thing I need to do is put the line layout on here that I want to have. Put a little bit of water on the leather. Let it sit for a few minutes, then go ahead and do the tooling on it. So you may have seen me, before I did the stitching, I uh, cut a little bit of leather out with this little cutter. And that lets the stitching sit down flush with the leather instead of sticking above it. And then I used the stitch marker to put where all my holes need to be, drilled the holes in, and then a super secret to making your stitching look really good. It pretty much only works with wax thread, but after you get done stitching, Lightly hammer it flat and that'll help the stitching look a little better and then go over it with your stitch marker and it just, it's like magic. It lays each stitch down and makes it look super nice. Otherwise, it really, really just doesn't look very good if you don't go over it with your stitch marker. Makes each stitch look really defined and stuff instead of just a big mushy mess. I got the tooling done. That took a long time, but I'm super happy with it. This is definitely my favorite tooling that I've ever done before, uh, but it also took the most amount of time. It's not, not that complicated, but it's just kind of like got this quilted elegance and I really like it. So what I'm doing now is putting the welt in. I gotta add a couple layers of uh, leather up here uh, to make a spot for the knife to go in. I'll, I'll have to keep adding layers until it's about the right thickness because I want the dagger to fit in just right. So I'll add some layers up here and I'll taper them down with the skiving tool. Once I've got that all done, I'll, I'll glue the other half on, do my layout for my stitches right here in the spot that we already cut where the stitching goes. So I'll go ahead and do them all the marking after that and drill all my holes for all the stitching. Go ahead and do the, the saddle stitch all the way around the whole sheath. After the stitching is done, I'll come out and use the grinder and round the edge because that's a little trick that really makes the sheaths look good is if you finish the edges and spend a lot of time on the edges making them look good and if you round them just a little bit like dome them it'll make the sheath looks look a lot thinner because uh, that's the problem with a lot of big sheaths is they look really 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 thick and that's because the edges aren't rounded a lot of times and because they didn't spend time like tapering the the parts where you could so taper the parts make them thin round the edges and it'll make the uh, sheath look slim I finished getting the welt put in, got about the right taper so the dagger fits in there and a nice, a nice, uh, nice amount of tension on the dagger. Uh, I had to mess around with it a little bit, I had to rip part of the welt off that I put on there and then ended up putting another thin piece back on. So after I did that, I glued the front on, got the stitching all laid out, drilled all the holes, did the stitching, finished the edge, rounded the edge just a little bit like I said, that makes the, makes the sheath look skinnier. Uh, finish it out with a 600 grit belt and lightly put some water on the, or put some water on the edge too and that helps the fibers lay down. And then I went over it with some of this gum trandecant stuff and a uh, little piece of antler and burnish the edge to help make it nice and smooth. So right now it's ready for the finish coat. I like to use this uh, Y-O sheen, probably like two coats of this Y-O sheen and I use an airbrush, spray it on, let it dry for a couple hours, and then spray on another coat. That, that way I can get a nice even coat and I don't get fibers or anything in the, in the finish. I'm super happy, I mean, this thing's basically done, so that's why I can say I'm super happy with how it came out. Yeah, my, my only thing that, uh, that I would probably change for next time is there's a little bit of a skinny area right here, and that's just because shark skin, 
kind of tapered out to nothing right here and then I had some extra layers that started right here to make the uh, sheath a little, little more open in the end for the ricasso. So because those layers ended there and then some other ones started here, there's kind of a little bit of a weird skinny spot. Nothing wrong with it uh, whatsoever. But next time it would be nice if I, if I had longer shark skin that went all the way through or if maybe I took some other le leather and kind of shimmed up the middle area there. Um, I possibly could have tapered some other leather and like filled in a little piece right here just to not have that skinny area. But besides that, I love how it came out, especially the tooling. I've never done this tooling before and it just, it's super, super cool. It took me a long time to do just in these little spots too, but I might try a whole sheath with it sometime. It actually kind of shimmers and dances around in the light and I've never had an effect like that on leather before. I mean, that's an effect I go for all the time on Damascus and and uh, fittings and stuff. Have it have like a 3D dancey chatoyant effect in the, on the leather is really, really cool. Yeah, so let's get to spraying this thing down with some leather finish. Now that I have my, now that I have my leather, now that I have my leather made, I'm gonna cut my pattern. And I've never looked at the warnings on this stuff. It has got a whole, row of warnings. Highly flammable liquid and vapor. May be fatal if swallowed and enters airways. Causes skin irritation. May cause an allergic skin reaction. Causes serious eye irritation. May cause drowsiness or dizziness. May cause genetic defects. Suspected of damaging fertility or the unborn child. May cause damage to organs through prolonged or repeated exposure. Toxic to aquatic life. Very toxic to aquatic life with long lasting effects. Keep away from extremely high or low temperatures. Take precautionary measures against static discharge. Do not breathe vapors, mist, or spray. Wash hands, forearms, and other exposed areas thoroughly after handling. 